Oh, you'll be able to follow along better now too. I've created this list of things that need to be done in order to make Sparkles airworthy again. All the jobs and all the tasks and everything that needs to be done from now to completion until first flight. This will help you follow along step by step all the different things that need to be completed item by item. I hope it helps to follow along with this project. Okay, so you could say there's a fair bit of work involved to get the aircraft flying again. So I've made a list of things um, and we'll be able to use this list uh, in upcoming videos to show you what's been achieved, what's been done and how much we've got left to go before we complete the list. So let's have a look at the aircraft and just see exactly what there is to do. I've got them in some sort of order and uh, you'll appreciate that as you go through it and you'll see that way how um, how far progressed we are through the list. So what does it take to get an aircraft like this after an aircraft incident, a crash, where I thought it was written off back to airworthiness and flyable again like it used to be? All right, so the first thing was logistics, um, payment of a deposit for the parts. So I've done a parts list, check done. I've spoken to the aviation uh, organization that I belong to and they're happy with what I'm doing so that's done. We're waiting for uh, written confirmation of that now. We're comparing the warp drive propeller option with the Australian produced Bolly propeller. I would like to get the Bolly propeller if I can but there may be some resistance from the manufacturer to allow me to do that so that's a local um, uh, you know, a, law, a legal thing I guess. Um, we've got, okay, so things to do. Parts orders, that's nearly finalised. We've got some additional maybe to do. We've got final payment to make, final parts requests, just in case I've missed anything. Pay some GST, the goods and services tax in Australia when the parts get here. Um, I can then receive the parts. I've got to do some flight training competency uh, evaluation just for my own benefit really and probably to satisfy the authorities that I'm capable of landing safely now, now that I've had the confidence kicked out of me. Um, and I'll have to get an airworthiness inspection done on the aircraft after it's built and make sure that it's registered before we can fly. The propeller we briefly talked about can I change brands? Should I get the nickel leading edge metal on the warp drive propeller as an option to protect it from stone chips? And then we also want to make sure that the propeller is correctly balanced. The engine, uh, wiring connections need to be made. Um, that will happen twice. Once for uh, starting up the engine, which I'm in the process of doing now, and the other one for permanent connection, of course, when we finish wiring up the whole aircraft ready to fly. That's after I install the new instrument panel. We've got to start the engine, make sure it's running properly, and make sure it's uh, performing to specification before we can trust it for flight, obviously. Oil change and service. I'd like to change the oil and we'll check all the service parameters like air filters, oil, uh, fuel filters, everything like that. Just to make sure that she's back up to spec and we'll check all the safety wiring is intact as well. The propeller will obviously need safety wiring too as, uh, as a requirement there. We have um, the airframe. 
pre-dismantle. Now what I mean by that is we've got to pull off all the pieces we don't need uh, and then start from there basically. So it's a partial dismantle in the process of doing that now. We have to then replace or basically start rebuilding the new aircraft which will involve the base tube, the main gear, the engine install, reinstallation. Now this is in an order of what I think should be done and, and how I should progress through it. We'll have to do all the wiring, make sure everything's good there. Um, construct the instrument panel, the new one on the new manufacturer's provided instrument panel. Um, wing assemble and attach, so that'll get the wing back on the aircraft. We're getting a fully new wing. Obviously the old one's too far gone to try and rebuild. I'll have to make the brakes work, the intercom, the radio, check the propellers adjusted correctly, the mast or pylon which the wing attaches to will be fitted. Now obviously I've got to do the wing after that. Instrument calibrations, make sure everything's reading correctly. Strobe lights need to be installed, landing lights need to be installed, composite fitment completion, everything else that's composite needs to be fitted to finish the aircraft airframe. And the last things we need to do, obviously, flight testing. This is going to be a bit interesting, but that will be the stage where we see sparkles returning to the air. Baby steps first, and then we'll get airborne and she'll have her first maiden flight after the rebuild. That will involve brakes, propeller pitch trimming to get the um, RPM correct for full wide open throttle, wing trimming uh, to make sure that the pitch, the pitch and the roll is correctly adjusted for the wing and everything works correctly there. We'll do some ground run ups to make sure the engine's getting full power and everything's not overheating or oil's pressures are good and all that. We'll do some high speed taxis to make sure the brakes work, the taxi's stable and that everything's performing correctly there. And then we can do some ground hops before we finally take to the air and do some circuits. Make sure the aircraft's turning, banking, um, pitching, hasn't got any weird tendencies. Do some wing adjustments as necessary. And then from there on we can restart our Cryobox adventure flying and we will have some more fun again soon. I kind of think we might be back in the air in March of 2022. Um, it really depends on how much time I get between now and then and when my parts arrive. And we're certainly keeping an eye on how long that will take because to me at the moment that's my biggest risk. I'm sending money overseas and I'm hoping to see everything turn up and I have put a lot of trust and faith into p &M Aviation that they can provide and deliver and make this possible. Because if we can't, well, I don't want to think about that. Let's be positive, let's stay optimistic, let's get this thing airborne, follow along, come on the journey and enjoy the return to flight with Cranbox and Sparkles. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video when we commence rebuilding in the series called Rebuild.